Because to be white in 1963, and I would argue still today, is to have the luxury, the privilege, if you will, of not having to know black and brown truth. You can be oblivious to the reality of people of color and suffer no consequence. Very, very segregated country. Millions of white Americans live in places where they rarely see anyone of a different race. You're listening to Your Neighbor's Hood, a podcast for uncomfortable culture conversations, specifically about race. Do your thing, Christina and Jackie. Hey, 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 it is Jackie here with one half of Your Neighbor's Hood. You're probably wondering, where is Christina? Well, guess what? It is a beautiful reason as to why Christina isn't here. You guys probably already know if you've been listening that she is the communications director for a local um, race here for uh, a city council, and she has been on it. I mean, a working, busy woman, and if you know, uh, if you can keep it up with what I've been doing, it's been a busy time just getting folks to get out and vote and heading up different uh, voting efforts. We have been crazy busy women just in the realm of civics, and you know that's so important to us. It's one of the, it's the main reason that brought us together for the podcast, so it will never stop. So in all of our productiveness, because we're never busy, we are just productive, um, we're going to give you guys some of our random conversations and hope you guys enjoy it. We'll definitely be dropping um, some of our already together episodes, but we want to make sure that you guys have content as always because you are important to us. We are in each other's hood. We hope that you guys are getting out the vote. I know if Christina was here today, she would be saying the same thing. I don't care who you're voting for, what you're voting for. We just want you to do it. So I'm hoping you guys are able to enjoy this random conversation about feminism and activism and how do white women navigate listening to black activists and how do we create more conversation. It was a really nice random conversation Christina and I had um, a couple months back, but it is here for you. Now, if you find yourself on Facebook or Instagram today, I'm going to do an ask. I'm going to ask that you guys, if you're on your neighbor's hood or at your neighbor's hood on Instagram, drop Christina a line, cheer her on as she does the good work with her candidate today. If you don't drop us a line at your neighbor's hood, go to her on Instagram. It's at C Kimbrough, C K I M B R O U G H, C Kimbrough, and or hit her up on Facebook. Just give her a little whoop whoop, girl. You got it today. Yeah, I think she'd enjoy that from us guys. She's our neighbor. As always, we hope that everything is good in your hood and that you drop us a line. We're always wanting to hear from you. We thank you guys for being staying tuned and being a part of our art of our adventure and our neighborhood and I hope you enjoy. You need to do the work like don't expect black women to teach you to everything. completely understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then the white women shut down. And it's not what it's, and again, I'm trying to understand. It's not black women's responsibility to handhold. It's not black women's responsibility to massage egos. And I get that too. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know what you're trying to say. Just, yeah, it's just, just pull it together. I, I don't know. I'm scared to say it. All these black activists are going to hate me. I don't know what they need to look like if they hear If they do, then the they road. do, right? Yeah. Because I, I, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine is that other people, there's a space and a place for a lot of different things in the world we live in, and we have to be very grateful for that. Yeah. But when the, the best light that we can live in is in our own light, mm-hmm. that's the best one that we can live in. So this is we are in what the business. Light's wrong though. <laughs> no. Then you say, you know what, my light's wrong. Yeah. Because I think for okay, I'll just say it. I just I read that stuff and I'm like, I can't do this by myself. Like I don't know how I'm supposed to unpack white supremacy unless I understand and hear from the voices that have been suppressed because I will never have been, I will never, uh, I just can't, like, I can't understand it. So when Googling things and trying to unpack white supremacy, 
learning it, the impact of it from like Google and stuff. Like that's the only place I know to go. And if, if these the black women don't want to engage with me and teach, I'm not asking them to teach me, but like to a certain extent, if they just want to shut down the conversation, I don't know how much, I don't know how much further I can go. And I also don't know what kind of relationship to have. Right. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Because like I'm following these, these women on Instagram. I'm like, if we were friends, they don't want to talk about this stuff. So like, what am I, cause I'm exhausting or I'm learning, you know, so then I'm like, I don't really know, like, how would you move forward with a relation? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where do you go when you, I get, I get what you're yeah. saying. I get so you're... I, and I'm just saying I'm holding space for, and I can't even imagine if you have a huge following, the amount of ignorance that comes through with white people. I'm not discounting that and the amount of exhaustion. In fact, one activist I follow, I think it's genius, said, if you want to ask me a question, pay me. So if you slide into her DMs, she doesn't answer unless you pay her like $5 or something. Yeah. I was like, and she's got like a following of 50,000 people. So oh, wow. like, good for her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she does an entire newsletter. It's that she, she rose that I was talking about she's, mm. uh, in New York. She's really cool. I mean, she triggers me all the time, you know, but it's good. Um, and so she does a newsletter for like $10 and I haven't subscribed yet. Cause I just don't have money. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Place, but I want to. Because she gives, like, work and, like, and it's mostly white women that are doing it. Good. Yeah, it's and really good. But but the, I want to, what I was going to say to you, you hit on something. You hit on something. I lost a thought. I was listening. Mm-hmm. I lost a thought, but it. I'm just rambling. Cause I no, no, you're not rambling. Figure it out. But, but it really is true because I think there's two sides to what um, women of color um, of how they feel about it. I can just speak for how I feel hearing what you say and then how I feel as a person. It's it's that, no, I don't want to be... Bruce chasing his tail. Um, I don't want to be your Wikipedia. I don't want to be your blah, 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 blah. I get all of that. But then on the same token, I don't want you coming at me like you know it all. Right. So there's right. this fine so there's line of, of... Which is why I think the work has to be done in tandem. Right. And meaning I can you you have to do what you're doing. Meaning keep reading, yeah. keep educating yourself, keep you doing those educate. things, right? So that we can come together and even have these conversations. Right. But don't ever come off as if you no. you just know. Which right. again, which you wouldn't do. But how could we even have those conversations if anytime you're met, anytime you come and say, Well, you know, I, I really don't understand this. Right. I say, go do the work. When part Thank of that you. work, when part of that work is you going out and doing that and then coming back and let's really talk about it. Yeah. So, cause, so you can get that, um, not even experience, but that perspective. Yeah. So you can see from my paradigm right. what you're trying to understand. Right. Or I can give you an understanding because even when I talk to you about stuff, it's like it's only coming from my view sure. and my world and my experience as being a woman of color mm-hmm. in the United States of America. Like, mm-hmm. like that's it. Mm-hmm. That's Jackie Jackson Glass. That's my one point of view. That's one. But there are so many. Yeah. There's well, so many. I think the reason it's, it's, I'm, I want you to listen to the 30 minute podcast from this girl. And I, I still want to reach out to her name for Rachel Cargill. Um, she was on the Pantsuit Nation podcast. Um, you know, Pantsuit Nation, the no. Facebook group. So when Donald Trump was getting elected, they made a Facebook group for women that supported Hillary. Hillary. It grew to like 5 million women. Yeah. And I'm still in it. Yeah. And so now they, and so then they turn it into a podcast. Or it's, so they're a resistance podcast. A lot of their stuff's great, but. You know, it's, it's just giving you the paradigm that they're coming from is resist this current administration. But Rachel was just on there talking about the Instagram fight that I was trying to show you the other day about yeah. the women going back and forth. So what I'm, the point that I'm trying to get at is like I'm seeing a lot of what I'm seeing on Instagram. Like I'm trying to listen to these activist leader women, but then it's impacting my relationship with you. You might not even know it because I'm filtering everything I say, even though I'm supposed to be doing this. Does that yeah. make, sense? It makes sense? And I'm like, don't exhaust your friend. Don't ask her too many stupid questions. Don't yeah, but we're, white we're women. in the business of doing that. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I know. So it and, and I'm not I, saying it doesn't apply to me, but I have to. You got to do it. Yeah. And, and part of that is I also have to say, be able to say and be an example and say that's it's too much. Right. And that's what I was trying to say. Like, I think we have a different model. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I haven't seen that anywhere. I've seen. And this is what I'm because I think what we're also 
trying to do is is better communication between the races, right? Yeah. Between races, right? Mm-hmm. And what I'm seeing a breakdown is in white women saying like, well, I can't do anything right. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know what to do. So where do we go from here? And then the black activists are like, well, I don't give a shit. You just got to do the work. Figure it out. And and then you're like left with like, oh my God, what do I, what? Like, <laughs> and again, not cradling white fragility. Like, I get all the things, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not making a case for white women. I just think it's. No, make a case for white women well, because I you need to make what, a case. Well, what I think ha- I see happening is just fracturing relationships. That's yeah. all. I'm not saying their work is wrong because I don't. I will not, it's not be a black activist. It's not wrong. Like, it's right. And I think there's a space for it. And there are women that need to be told do the work. There are women that will always be defensive and never do the work. There's categories, right, of women. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's women like me who like get stuck in the middle. And I think of my friends who are like. Oh my God, this message is so confusing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really know. And I don't, and I don't have to look, it's so confusing. And so yeah. I'll just leave it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so then we freaking walk away from it, it's like, which uh, isn't good either. But no. like, but you don't know which you feel like you're dodging landmines. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to say that I feel like not with you, but like with this stuff, I'm like trying to dodge a landmine everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I have to stop doing that because it's not helping anyone. But because I, it's, it's hard to even articulate this stuff. I'm articulating what I'm hearing my white friends saying and the barriers to conversation. But that's what we do, though. Right. I know. Like, that's that's, what I'm, that's why I'm sharing it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's awkward because you feel – because it's hard because I'm trying to listen to these women and, like, be – you know, and they're unpa- – like, Rachel does a whole thing on unpacking white feminism, which I wish I could take. I would love to. Um, her course. And because uh, it, it would be very important to do – that might even be an episode we could do ourselves mm-hmm. and reach – like re- I'd actually love to research white feminism, what it's done, where it's inherently gone wrong, mm-hmm. and then our our way of being feminist. And yeah. do you consider yourself a feminist? I consider myself a feminist. Yeah. I'm just not. I mean, I know that, and I'm not going to say every feminist is like the mainstream pushes it. Mm-hmm. They're just like you just said, that. different categories of feminism mm-hmm. in a sense that it's one word, but it is interpreted many different ways. Mm-hmm. Very good. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, and there is a way that it has been inherently harmful to women of color yeah. and has not been inclusive. No. So I think as a cultural thing, that's what's going on right now. It's like I, I see us as cultural reporters. Let's put it this way. What's a way to continue the conversation for everyone? Yeah. And make sure we are moving forward and that it's my impact is not harmful. Right. I think the lady yesterday, it's so funny that she that she started talking about her kids because that's when I'm trying to finish up the article, um, the blog, I was um, writing about being something, an example was being intentional about the media that they consume Mm -hmm. and this, uh, it's pro it's, it's programming Mm -hmm. just as, you know, like I'm I'm trying to stop using the word domestication, but it's the only way that I can put it is that when I have a puppy and I teach a puppy that certain behavior is okay, like you can jump on people Mm -hmm. and somebody comes along and they don't want to be jumped on, but that puppy keeps jumping. That's all that they know. And so then we, we're training our children that when they see things like if my dog sees a certain behavior in me, they're going to assume something. If I put on my shoes, they assume I'm going out, so they're meeting me at the door. Whether I'm putting on my shoes to go outside or not, they're going to assume that. So even even if, where am I going with this? So even if we think we're not sending signals or teaching things, they're, they are always interpreting them as right. something, and they're only going back on toward to... Um, the same thing that they knew. The, the thing that they knew, yeah. Um, how would you not? <laughs> mm-hmm. Bible, this is it. Okay, this is the rules. This is the law. I got to follow it. But I'm not saying it's not true, but you also have to think things through for yourself. Right. So if a black activist had told me to Google something, then I would be like, that's it. Okay, I can't ask any questions. That's not good, though. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm glad you spoke up be- because I think that I know that you, when you come to that room, you're like, I've done so much wrong. I have so much to learn. You're very vulnerable. You're just very, like, if a black person says it, then it's true. And it's true, yeah. You that's, see what I'm saying? That is, and that's so scary because there's so many people that are just, like, that's not what I'm trying to tell you, Having though. it. Like, they are not having it with you. They're like, I'm not having it with you white people. Like, go Which do it I yourself. I understand. Yeah, like, I get it. But too. all black people aren't like that, no, though. No, 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 no. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know how we get that message across because... 
white people definitely want to feel be. that way and we want to get better but if we if if all we interact with is the louder voices of the ones saying they don't, they don't want to with us and we need to do the work ourselves then it fractures friendships yeah. i don't know I, no, I mean, you don't have to know what, I, what, I, what I was going to say. Duran said um, people want to be led. Yeah. And that's the danger in this. Is that that's that's, that's it. Led. That's what I'm trying to say. He articulated that better. Yeah. I'm just, and I'm saying I'm coming from it. Like, I love Rachel Cargill. I love all these activists I follow. But I'm also just going to do what I always do with everything. And I'm going to critically think. Yeah. I'm going to challenge it. Not them. Like, no. I'm not going to do it online and be emotional labor. I put, like, I, everything they say isn't Bible. No. There's nothing that anyone says that's Bible to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I see Bible, you know, like... 100%. 100% yeah. You know, I blindly like, follow nothing. Yeah, me neither. And I think I've been trained to critically, th- I mean, that journalist, my, like, I was always taught, like, don't trust anything, even from your mama. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what was it? It was like, ch- fact check your mama. Like, that. like, truly, truly. Like, you a hemorrhoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my name growing up. <laughs> they called you a hemorrhoid? My dad did. Why? He just did. And that's why I wonder why, because. You I didn't feel like me that nickname. Yeah, no. Okay, so my whole my whole childhood, my dad was like, "You old hemorrhoid," or he would just be like, "Hemorrhoid." Is it like an endearing. Type I had no idea what a hemorrhoid was until I was like thirteen, and I finally asked him, "Dad, what is a hemorrhoid?" He's like a a pain in the ass, and I was like, oh, "My oh. whole life, you've been calling me this hemorrhoid," and I didn't know. No, it's okay because uh-huh. I am. Yeah, because I am, and I think it's that's part of it uh-huh. is that I challenge. Yeah, him. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. And you should have seen me growing up in <laughs> church. I stayed behind and talked to every pastor, <laughs> made appointments with pastors at like 13 years old. I was like having my mom. I don't know if I believe in hell. What is hell? Why am I, you know, and these pastors were like, you, you are, are exhausting. exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, like I've just always been, that is, uh, that's why I, I know that I went to become a journalist because yeah. I'm just, that's how I think. Yeah. I never just hear things and I'm like, I, I don't challenge people to be annoying. I don't challenge for this. Like, I'm not trying to get a rise out of people. I'm challenging because it's when it's valid. When it's valid. Make and sense? I think when we're talking when about this. When my these, intuition says, you know what? This right. just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Like you said with that lady, like, okay, I hear you. And maybe that's her response is very valid. And if that's what she feels that she needs to do, mm-hmm. but not everyone feels that way. No, and I respect you coming from a place and being able to have the conversation. And I, absolutely. And I honor her exhaustion. I honor the uh, emotional labor. And I, I'm not saying I understand it because I never can. So then I know that to have conversations with her about that. Stuff. Right, right, right. But you are very different. Yeah, but we're all, I mean, I think we all have, like, even the two ladies in the room had different yeah it's very similar but very different but you see again it gets confusing for white people though because then we're like what, what black the person do I listen do? to yeah because we're like, individuals this one's telling me not to ask any questions and and that's what I say I'm like that's what I'm trying to bring up the piece about the emotional labor it's like every it's just it's humans are individuals we're very different yeah you know and so that's some learning that has to happen on the side of white people too is learning to see black people as individuals because because unfortunately, society casts you all as the same or yeah. one voice, and not and that's yep. Cause because it, you could fall into the trap different. of saying that well, oh, this black lady told me this, uh-huh. so all black ladies uh, believe 100%. this. Again, you're doing the thing that we're saying don't do, yeah. and, and so if you get to know us as individuals, you would say just like you say with your friends, I can't talk to Sarah the same way I talk to Christine, right. Absolutely. and I can't talk to Christine. So that's what makes you. It's a way to simplify it and say you need to just get to know the person on an individual basis respect their own boundaries that they have for themselves and just realize that not every black person is going to have the same I mean I've learned that like I said Lauren said she didn't really she may have but she didn't feel like she experienced racism until it was other black people to her yeah I was like I don't, can you black people be racist to black people well how does that we, work we, it's prejudice we, we, that's what Terrain was saying the other day it's we we are we discriminate against each other we yeah. are prejudiced towards each other that's, we have I think our it's own prejudice. yeah we have our own. We have colorism is a real thing. That's it. And That's what Jamar was saying is colorism. And yeah, you know it's that. a real thing. And sometimes it's not even 
it, it, it sometimes it's not even um, color anymore. Sometimes it's um, I was gonna say clout, <laughs> but it is. It's a seeing another woman because we're so used to being those only women in the room, mm -hmm. and then when you see another black woman in the room, or you see another black man in the room, well, I don't know if men have that issues that issue, but it can be contentious because well, I'm used to being the only one. Gotcha. Oh, and wow. so it's like you're in my space, right? I'm the black That's, person here. This is so funny. Lauren had an interaction with Mama T. <laughs> I was like, because I saw shit. her Instagram story and she was at the same, because she lives close to there. She was using the same laundry mat. And I was like, I guarantee you that's Mama T. She talked about, but she was talking about how um, she was very nasty to Lauren. She like, Lauren accidentally broke a machine and just, there was an issue and she was screaming at her. I was like, yeah, I had a similar interaction. And she's like, and the white people walked in and did this, something happened with them. And she was completely different. Yeah. And I was like, really? I've never heard it. What? Like, yeah. It was just a whole learning process. Yeah. And I was like, she's like, yeah, oh, yeah, very much so. Like, she treated me way shittier than she would have treated. Yeah, because we customers. all were taught not to like us. Yeah. Right. So if you're indoctrinated in a culture like that. Yes. Yeah. It's like, the white people are better. And pity and you treat them each other. Well, we had, they had to. Because they, we, and when you go back to slavery, they did not want us to have, if you, if they, loving your, your, mm -hmm. your, your spouse, your children was, could be used against you. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was seen as a weakness. It could be used. So it's like, we are, we are fractured mm -hmm. internally within ourselves and with building relationships, but we're so communal. So it's so hard. It's like, because I want to be around all these people that I love right. and care about, but then I don't know how to be with these people. Right. Because it's deeply rooted. Right. And so wow. Mama T sees it like, oh, well, if the white folks come in here, make sure we do, we can't, we can't let them see, or we got to be good to the white folks because of this. I'll keep the white folks happy. Keep the white folks happy gotcha oh, so and then if you go girl what are you doing you know what I mean like right. it's easy to right because she went off on Lauren and Lauren was, Lauren was like okay they I don't like serious. the way that you're coming at me that's what she said how can we she, she was really really just like did the situation while she's like I don't like her coming at me how can we resolve this issue together but in a different you know you in a different manner I was like wow okay she's yeah. like she calmed down after that but she was like she did not treat me the way she was treating the white people yeah. and she's like blatantly it was she was like it was night and day so isn't it crazy though but because the way she came at you about white people right is that and that's that was that crazy. is the that is the epitome of the slave mentality yeah oh my god wow. I hate you but I love you right oh my god that's like so much of I hate you, but I will abuse. take, I will just take right. it from you. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I hate what you do to me, but, or I hate the way you've made me feel over time. But I it's will a, treat it's, you. Yeah, it's an, it's abusive. And that is abusive. That's what I'm saying. It's and you guys, you don't know that, but it's all behind the skin that we're in. Right. Right. That's why I want to read that book, The Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this random conversation between the two of us. This is how we kind of get our ideas for um, different podcasts that we do. So as we talk and we work through, we listen to our random conversations and see what we can pull out of them for an actual podcast. And we're grateful to have them recorded so that you guys can see how our wheels spin before we hit the record button uh, for an episode. So again, the so what is today is election what? Election day. And the now what is we hope you get out there and vote. And we'll definitely see you guys later this week with either a live or a full episode. We haven't decided yet, but know we're out here just trying to make our corner of the world a better place and hope you do the same. Oh, and another thing, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment. We need it. We'd love to hear your feedback. Check us out on YouTube. We've got some pretty interesting things there for you to see. Let us know what you think. So as Christina would say, stay open and stay curious. And I hope you guys make it a great day.